Welcome to our series of lectures on complex numbers. Real numbers give us solutions for many equations. However, there are some equations, for example, x squared plus 1 equals 0, which have no solutions in real numbers. Now, mathematicians don't like this situation. They want equations to have solutions. So they said, let's give this equation, x squared plus 1 equals 0, let's give it a solution and we'll call it i. So we'll define i as the square root of minus 1. And so i squared will be minus 1. Now I know that for years you've been told that you can't take the square root of a negative number, but now we're saying you can take the square root of a negative number. And the numbers we get when we do this are called complex numbers. There is one complex number which we regard as not having an argument at all. Can you guess which one it is? And when we step into complex numbers, we're really stepping into the twilight zone of numbers. Come and join me as we venture into this new realm. What's really special about our lectures is that if you have any questions to ask, you can ask them and I will be here to answer them, just like it is in a live lecture. This only happens in the courses of Solve and Evolve. Let's consider solving a complex equation given by equation number one, uh, which is e to the z equals one plus i root two. Here z is a complex number, we don't know what it is. And one plus i root two, you can say is another complex number. We name it w. And i, of course, is the square root of minus one. Sometimes in some courses you uh, call it small i, but in this course we are using big i to represent the square root of minus one. Now, the number w, you can see, lies in the first quadrant as uh, both of its real and imaginary parts are um, along the first quadrant of the real imaginary axis, and we can consider them as an ordered pair. Uh, in the polar form, um, and why we need the polar form is important here. Think about it. w can be written as mod of w times e to the arc of w times i, uh, which turns out to be root 3 e to the tan inverse root 2 i um, and you can see uh, how it has been explained about mod of w and arg of w uh, these things should be familiar to you so we come down to solving equation 2 instead of equation 1 uh, because equation 2 has both sides of the equation in polar form so uh, it's easier for us uh, to solve it and we know that uh, all we have to do here is to take the log of both sides of equation 2 so that we can uh, we can write um, uh, z in in the uh, expanded form which is uh, log of 3 <clears throat> uh, log of square root 3 plus i times uh, arctan of root 2 uh, which should be the very basic structure. However, since we are considering all revolutions, we have to consider the point uh, Z to be at this place, which is shown in the figure, every time it revolves a full revolution. So we have to add one full revolution of 2 pi every time it um, experiences that. So we consider a number k, which is uh, an integer, um, and we add 2k pi to its place, which is arctan root square root 2, so that our answer is complete and is written considering all revolutions of the pole. Next we see how we performed, and this button, how did I do with it? Help us understand if we have written the right answer, and it shows that we actually did. So this is how uh, the system um, allows you to, to do all the questions, uh, whether you are doing in the lecture with your facilitator or you're using, you're doing all on your own. The system will allow you to check your answers and get the feedback in case you've written something wrong. So um, uh, the rest you could learn when, once you are logged in and uh, get into practice for the course. Uh, for whatever reasons you are doing the course, but this will equip you for every purpose.